Hello everybody. So in this session, I am going to introduce with you to the part of quantum physics. Quantum physics conceptually is as exciting as special relativity that it's completely changed our fundamental understanding of how material world works. And technically it's much much more exciting than relativity at least for the moment being because it impacts much greater to modern technology you know for example the cpu in our cell phone and in our computer is made from the principle of quantum physics indirectly not from the principle of the modern technology okay Quantum information, quantum computing are starting to directly use the consequence of quantum physics to further change the world. So this is why quantum physics is so exciting. Historically, quantum physics follows a very different path compared to the development of relativity. Why it is the case? Because relativity comes with a minimal set of principles which we are not familiar with. For sure, there are various other principles which we are not that much familiar. However, quantum physics is different. It follows from a number of different important principles which are very counterintuitive, which if we are not seeing the experiments, we would never have imagined. So, in this set of lectures, I will introduce to you all of them and much more. Okay, so let's start. To get started in quantum physics, the first question we would like to ask is, what is the nature of light? Is light a particle or it's a wave? And this question was asked very early on ever since the Democritus around 3000 years ago. He already conjectured since he was thinking that everything is made up of atoms and so was light. So light should be particles and at similar times that other people also think that light should be waves. But at that moment that was some sort of philosophical thinking and later people start to think about this question in scientific framework. For example. In the 17th century, René Descartes felt that light should be wave and later the diffraction of light was discovered strengthened the idea that light should be waves. And further came Newton who discovered the dispersion of light that the white light can be separated into seven different colors by passing through a prism. And then the different colors is considered by him as different types of particles decomposed, okay. By that time Newton conjectured that the nature of light is particles which was very strongly criticized by Robert Hooke passed away in the beginning of 18th century. Following next year, Newton published his famous works on light, optics and because the greatness of the work, this work dominated the idea in this theory for a hundred years. Throughout this century, people think that light should be particles. And then, hundred years later, came Thomas Young and performed his famous double slit experiment that the light goes through two slits and then interfere with each other. If you are not familiar with this experiment, we will review it for some times later. However, this experiment make people believe again that light should be waves instead of particle. And another six decades later, talented Maxwell published his Maxwell equations. And in these equations, there is a prediction of a wave-like propagation of electric and magnetic field and that was conjectured to be the nature of light which was proved by Hertz. And this is the history and at this moment people think that the question the debatable question is, which is settled, light should be waves? The debate was settled in the classical era of physics actually. However, it arises again in the next century in a new era of modern physics before talking about what was the nature of light in the era of modern physics. Since here, 
we are talking about particles and waves, we should ask the question very clearly when we are talking about particles and waves as what we are exactly talking about, yeah? What are the definitions of classical particles and classical waves? Well, the classical particles, when we are talking about particles, what do we actually mean? We mean that there are some objects which can be counted, which can be labeled, yeah? This is particle number 1, this is number 2, number 3, in this way, counted and labeled. However, when we are talking about wave, wave do not have this property, okay? Since the amplitude of the wave can change continuously, larger or smaller, similar to my speech sound, sound wave that speak up continuously, speak up, speak down, so the volume, the amplitude of my sound wave also continuously changing, yeah? It cannot level. So this is volume 1, volume 2, volume 3 and nothing in between. That is not the case classically. And particles has a particular location. By location for sure, particles can be extended objects, can have a size, but it has a sharp boundary. So it is obvious, straightforward to define what is the center of mass of the object and what is the volume that this particle occupies. But for wave, it's much less obvious since by nature waves are extended object. For example, when I am delivering this lecture, that is when I am speaking, where is my sound wave? Can you see it? It is extended over the space and for sure eventually decays away continuously and slowly. But there is no sharp boundary of my voice, yeah? And when you are talking about particles, the more convenient quantities to describe a particle is momentum and energy related. For example, in the non-relativistic mechanics, by this energy-momentum potential relation. And for wave, it is more convenient to talk about the wavelength of the wave and the frequency of the wave. And for particles, if the two particles meet, what will they do? They will either collide or run away. They are not running into each other. They are not even to superpose it at the same position, yeah? However, what about waves? When two waves, if they meet, they superpose it. They have superpositions around each other and they just pass away as if nothing happens, yeah? For example, consider one light beam coming this direction and another light coming through that direction. When they meet, what will they do? They simply go past each other and for this nature of particles, I am pretty sure you are familiar for the nature of waves. Probably you are also very familiar if in your childhood uh, you used to tap the surface of the water to generate water waves and observe what they do. You observe what happens of the continuously amplitude and the extended nature and wavelength and frequency. If you take two sequence of waves, how do they overlap and then pass through each other? So they are the nature of classical particles and classical waves. They behave very differently. And over a centuries ago, it became very clear at that moment that light should be waves satisfying all these properties. However, then everything got changed. Let's see what leads to this change and then what is the new understanding of light. Is it a particle or it's a wave or something in between? 